This is the biggest solar plant in the United States, located in Kern, California. The Solar Star plant is over 8 square miles and has a generation capacity of 579 megawatts, powering around 255,000 homes. Now, this is impressive, but about 6,500 miles away in this remote desert, there's a solar facility that could dwarf it and just about every other solar plant on Earth. And it's not alone. Like many deserts, China's Kabugi Desert enjoys persistent but predictable winds and around 280 days of scorching sunshine every year. This makes it a challenging place to live, farm, or do just about anything else, but it makes it perfect for solar and wind generation. That's exactly what China is doing. This is the Kabuki Renewables base. It's roughly the size of 20 central parks, and when it's fully operational, it will supply 16 gigawatts to well over a million homes. Kabuki is impressive, but it's just the centerpiece in a vast network of around 225 bases being built across China's western and northern deserts. Kabuki and its sister projects are well on track to have generational capacity of 455 gigawatts, 60% of which will be solar and the other 40% will be wind. Now that's just staggering. To put it in perspective, that's more clean energy generation capacity than is currently available in any nation outside of China. A system that large could almost cover India's current energy needs by itself. 1.21 gigawatts. 455 gigawatts is equal to the combined green energy generation of the United Kingdom, Australia, and Indonesia, plus the total power capacity of Brazil. These bases are all due to come online within the next year or two, and that means China could dwarf the world's current renewable generation capabilities, but that raises the question, how has the world's current biggest polluter turned into green energy's biggest champion? I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. This video is brought to you by Incogbe, but more on that later. Remember this? Well, we're back in the desert. You probably already know, as I mentioned, that deserts are great for renewable energy generation. Can't have a solar farm without sun, and deserts have a lot of sun. Likewise, wind farms need wind, and that broad, warm, flat expanse of desert makes for reliable wind currents and predictable power generation. That all makes sense, but I've been a little deceptive. I haven't shown you a single shot of the Kabuki Desert just now. These are from the Ulanba, Tenjer, and Badain Jaran deserts, which are also in China. It just so happens that over a fifth of China's landmass is desert, and it's one of the largest countries in the world. What I'm trying to say is that China has a lot of room to work with, and as we mentioned earlier, deserts aren't exactly valuable territory. So the nation has leveraged the cheap real estate and surplus of sand to acquire huge tracts of land that is actively turning into these massive, renewable bases. This helps drive down the price of solar and wind power. China has the resources and space to build out a lot of cheap solar and wind energy. But there's more obvious factors at play here, too. Back in the 1990s, China saw a financial opportunity in serving Germany's growing demand for solar panels. Thanks to nearby raw materials and the structure of its supply chain, China was able to produce a ton of affordable solar panels. Other solar companies around the world didn't like the government subsidies and incentives the Chinese government was leveraging. In response, many countries imposed tariffs on Chinese-made solar panels in the 2000s. However, China was able to pivot and grow its own domestic renewables program. This drove domestic demand for solar panels and turbines. As Chinese economic and industrial power grew, demand for renewables grew right along with it. So how did China build their own renewable energy bases? Well, cheap access to lots of green technology, lots of manufacturing power, and lots of land ideal for solar and wind generation. But how China is building these bases is not as interesting as why China is rapidly building these bases. This is a big reason why China is going so big on renewables. This is Beijing in 2021, one of the biggest cities and one of the most powerful countries on Earth, and it's facing a crippling blackout. And this wasn't the only blackout. Well, what was that? Well, that year, the world faced a coal shortage due in part to the ongoing pandemic. More than half of China's energy comes from coal, which meant that the shortage forced parts of China to go dark. Droughts also meant that the hydroelectric plants were struggling to keep up with their demand, too. As you can imagine, that was both bad for the Chinese citizens and the country's economy at large. Then there's this. Here it is again. It's Beijing, and it's not out of power this time. It's just covered in a thick, toxic cloud. Industry isn't clean. It needs a lot of power, and the fastest and easiest way to get power is the dark side. Join me on the dark side of the fools. I mean, fossil fuels. 
And if China's massive industrial sector wasn't power hungry enough, they also have a massive population that needs electricity too. Most of which, again, comes from fossil fuels, which results in pollution like this. Not the kind of imagery an ascendant global power wants to project. While we're on the subject of fossil fuels, China is the world's second largest consumer of oil. They burn through over 13 million barrels per day in 2023, while only producing around 4 million. Including strategic reserves, that has led China to import around 11.4 million barrels of oil per day in 2023, which comes with a hefty price tag. Sure would be great if they weren't reliant on others for their energy needs. I think you can see where I'm going with this. So why is China adding 455 gigawatts of renewable energy? Lots of economic reasons, protecting the health of their citizens, energy independence, and international prestige, just to name a few. Gosh, it's almost like there's a lot of benefits for going green. <laughs> and if it's possible for this massive polluter to turn around, can other countries do it too? Are there lessons we can learn from China? And what does such a massive jump in green energy generation mean for the rest of the world? Well, before talking about how this may impact the rest of the world, there's something else that can impact you directly, and that's protecting your online privacy with today's sponsor, Incogni. Now, I've mentioned this before, but I signed up for a newsletter from a small online retailer, and after I did, I saw a major increase in the number of promotional emails that I was receiving from companies I've never heard of. That happened because that company sold my information to a data broker, and sometimes they sell your info to some pretty shady people or they can fall victim to data breaches that leak your data to scammers. I'm sure you've experienced this too, and Cogni can help you with this. We have the right to request that data brokers delete our information, but it takes a lot of time and effort. I signed up for Incogni, gave them the legal right to work on my behalf, and then just sat back and relaxed. You'll see updates in your account for which data brokers they've sent legal requests to and which ones have complied. It couldn't be easier. I've been letting Incogni stay on top of this for me for quite a while now, and I'm really happy with the results. If you want to take back some of the control around who has access to your personal information, give Incogni a try. The first 100 people to use the code UNDECIDED at the link below will get 60% off Incogni. Thanks to Incogni and to all of you for supporting the channel. So back to what we can learn from China. Now, the installation of bases like the one in Kabuki has analysts like those from the Center for Research on Energy and Clean Air all but guaranteeing that Chinese emissions and fossil fuel use not only will fall next year, but enter into an extended period of structural decline. This is due not just to those bases coming online, but the growth of other green tech industries in China like renewable batteries and electric vehicles. China is now hitting their 2030 reduced emissions goal five years ahead of schedule. This gives me hope that they'll be able to hit their zero emissions goal in 2060 as well. Now, if one of the largest consumers of fossil fuels can do it, then the rest of us can too, right? More immediately, all these plants coming online should mean less polluted air, not just for China, but its neighboring countries as well, and maybe more. If China continues to build these facilities and the technology continues to improve, there are opportunities for these neighbors to buy surplus clean energy from China. Countries like Mongolia that are currently China's major coal sources are acutely aware of China's greenification. They're trying to find alternative ways to generate energy and income as coal demand collapses. Mongolia shares the Gobi Desert with China and their side of the Gobi is just as capable at generating that amazing solar and wind energy. There's an opportunity here for China to export not just energy, but the energy generation expertise and material to these neighbors. It's flipping the script. But these opportunities aren't just limited to China's neighbors. Since 2013, China has been making economic and literal inroads to much of the world, especially the Global South, with its Belt and Road Initiative, or BRI. It's like China's attempt to make a sort of neo-silk road. Basically, China builds up these countries' infrastructure in exchange for favorable access to their natural resources. Under the BRI, China can potentially build up their green infrastructure of these countries too. Though I have to point out that BRI is very controversial. Proponents in the World Bank have noted that BRI involvement can raise a country's GDP by upwards of 4%. It can also boost the world's economy and gives these countries access to infrastructure development that in many cases wouldn't normally be available to them. Detractors have called it a form of neocolonialism and have cited instances where the program negatively impacted the local environment, involved displacing native peoples, and even some really kind of bad human rights abuses. Again, I'm not a geopolitics channel, so I'm not gonna get into the details of that, but it does bring up a good point. China is a global power on the ascent, and I'm not suggesting that they'll bestow this energy or technology on their neighbors or allies simply out of the goodness of their heart. Surely there will be some serious economic and political strings attached. 
Is it worth the trade-off for the improved infrastructure and access to green technology? It's a complicated issue, and it's not really for me to decide. <laughs> I guess you could say I'm living up to the name of the channel on that point. Now, all of this assumes that what China is doing at home can be replicated elsewhere, which is certainly not always going to be the case. Heck, even China is facing some serious problems. Check this out. Notice an issue? How about now? Most of the renewable bases are in those far less populated regions in the West, while some of China's biggest cities are on the East Coast. It's difficult to get all that power from point A to a very distant point B without losing a lot in the process. China is actively tackling this issue by developing ultra-high voltage power lines. However, for the time being, they're actually generating more renewable energy than they can actually use, which is leading to curtailment. All the clean energy generation in the world doesn't mean much if it's not actually replacing fossil fuels. Still, there's lessons to learn here. My home country of the United States recently passed the Inflation Reduction Act, or the IRA, which directs $500 billion in federal spending and tax breaks towards, <laughs> unsurprisingly, reducing inflation. Over half of that allotment is intended to go towards clean energy, with another $50 billion going toward manufacturing. Though no one can really match China's manufacturing power, we're not too far behind here in the US. Our western and northern regions are home to deserts and grasslands ripe for solar and wind energy. We have our own installations in many of these places already, and I'm glad the IRA seems to have learned from China's economic incentives, but I hope we go further and create our own fully-fledged clean energy bases. Having everything from mining resources to manufacturing solar panels, wind turbines, and batteries here in the US could drop costs and accelerate our adoption and give us tremendous amounts of energy security. No bones about it, this is an amazing step in the right direction. And unlike a lot of stuff in the green tech space, the Kabuki clean energy base isn't a work of futurology or the pitch of an exciting startup. It's real, it's working right now, and it's getting bigger. It has a bunch of sibling bases all coming online in the next few years. China's basically doubling the world's renewable generation overnight. So what's not to like? Well, it's not an unalloyed good or success. China's emissions levels have continued to rise, and they're still building coal plants to supplement the intermittent power of their renewable bases. After a post-COVID rebound in CO2 output during 2023, some estimates are showing that China may have hit peak carbon. 2024 and beyond shows declining numbers, but building and permitting more coal plants in 2023 and beyond feels like two steps forward and one step back. As we've seen in places like Germany, even methodical, well-planned attempts to entirely phase out coal by 2030 have been scrapped in light of unforeseen geopolitics and energy crises. China already accounts for half the world's coal consumption, so it's worrying to see their government constructing even more coal plants. As some analysts have warned, there's a fight brewing in China between renewable stakeholders and fossil fuels stakeholders. It's a familiar fight that we're seeing everywhere else around the world. I can only hope that renewables win and do what I can back home. But what do you think about the rapid build out of giant solar power plants like this? Jump in the comments and let me know. And be sure to check out my follow-up podcast, Still To Be Determined, where we'll be discussing some of your feedback. And thanks to all my patrons who get ad-free versions of every single video. Your support really does help to keep me delivering these videos to you every week. If you'd like to support the channel and get in on the early videos, check out the link in the description. I'll see you in the next one.